Good evening, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Trails in the Sky the Third. This is me, your host, Logic Blade, and we're back after a uh, brief reprieve. Last time around, we uh, started up Chapter 6. We uh, brought color back to Genus Royal Academy, and we uh, infiltrated Ouroboros' uh, Valeria Lakeshore base once again. Except it was all in reverse, and it was, uh... Still very much the same dungeon, I mean. You just, you just reverse it. It doesn't, it doesn't change anything. In any case, let's, uh... Get right back to the thick of things. We're gonna head right back to the garden. And then we're gonna figure out what we need to do to get inside the next, uh... The next monument. It seems we have to clear all four monuments before being able to clear the final plane. And now that bosses are using S-Crafts, we're uh, finally getting damage done to us. It only took, uh, what, 13 episodes or so? Uh, we are currently halfway through Chapter 6. Uh, I've done all the moon doors. I haven't done all of the... Uh, all the sun and star doors yet, but I'm getting pretty close, I think. Got, uh... Hell, I'll just, uh, pull it up right now. Yeah, I still haven't finished, uh, sun door 2 and 4 yet. Uh, star door 10 I haven't finished yet, but, uh... I'm gonna go check that out. And, uh, yeah, done all the moon doors. So, before I continue, I am going to drink some water, and talk to everyone before heading off. <laughs> Sounds like Kilka. And it's like, I'm gonna go Zeiss, help Kilka out. Shit, Erica's there. <laughs> Oh dear. The best approach here is to keep calm and take obstacles as they come. I sure hope we don't end up facing someone truly fearsome later. <laughs> I mean, what could what could possibly go wrong? <laughs> uh how have you been, Pats fan? Itai has been a long day for me. I've been up for a long period of time, and yet I'm not the slightest bit tired. Woohoo. Nice, nice. It's always nice to be uh, busy with work rather than uh, busy with other things. Well, it seems like we've learned a bit more about Phantasma, that these books are all uh, manifestations of our of the information in our minds. Which probably explains why there's so many weird, uh, weird books regarding, uh, stories we've read and stuff, and, uh, all of the forbidden church books and such. <laughs> oh, my Annalise is taking a nap. <laughs> Nice. I, uh, I recently finished, uh, Siconia. I haven't, uh, quite done all of the, uh, little side things after beating it, but, uh, god, that is, that is one jaded and depressing visual novel, that's for sure. <laughs> Just like, yeah, everyone's gonna die, it's all your fault. 
Uh, to go into more detail would be spoilers. But yeah, classic, uh, classic Ryu Kishi stuff. Classic One They Cry stuff. <laughs> and Julia's saying, hey, you want to make sure, you know, everyone in your party is kind of like caught up in levels? It's probably a good idea. doesn't inherit the tightest style, she's gonna have trouble finding a husband for herself. Zin, you're talking like you're, uh, you're not, uh... <laughs> Zin, yeah, you're not talking like you're the lead candidate to be her, uh, to be her husband. Or, uh, her wife, I guess? I don't know. <laughs> her, her, her spouse would be the most correct. <laughs> Um, anyway, we're gonna go to Star Door 10. <laughs> Alright, let's go see what Ren Star Door is all about. I'm sure nothing bad will happen in this one. Overcome the trial before you, then I shall grant you a memory fragment and my blessing. Alright. Why do my art suck? Did I get... Did I have my arts ganked on me again? I think I might have got my arts ganked on me again. Whatever. <laughs> I know, it's annoying. This is... Nice. <laughs> Screw it. God damn it, they're all over the place. Guess I'm doing it this way. I don't even have Curia. That's... that's pathetic. Shazam! Uh, well... There we go. That was more annoying than anything. I think I just got all my, uh, arts taken away from me, because Ren should not have been owned like that. Not even close. Well, whatever. Let's go see what this, uh, trial's all about. <laughs> Loading. Complete. <laughs> That's all about our good buddy Potter Modder. Gordius Class Tactical Archaism Development Plan Author, 
13 factories. Codename, Potter Modder. Plan Overview We intend to develop a cutting-edge archaism that inherits the DNA of the rest of the Gordius series, while containing a more advanced control system. It will retain the same tactical effectiveness that was the primary development goal in previous models while allowing for more flexible and precise strategic usage as well. The Archaism is intended to be accessible across the whole continent. Powerful main and sub-engines should allow it to operate for several years without resupplying. Several years, huh? Autonomous combat ability. The use of the Mars Integrated Orbital Arith Arithmetic Logic Unit will allow for advanced autonomous combat and effective identifying of targets. In addition, the Archaism's control system will make use of the operator's nervous system allowing for reflexive, instinctive movements in combat. The operator will communicate with the Archaism without being in physical contact with it. This will require a compatible candidate to be found and chosen. Dimensions Overall height, 15.5 arge, or approximately 50 feet in, you know, 50 feet tall. Pretty big boy. He's a pretty big boy, that's for sure. Unit weight, 55 Torum. 68 Torum when fully armed. So, 55 tons, 68 tons. The Archaism's primary weaponry will be its Orbital Energy Cannons, but it will have other kinds of Orbital Weaponry, and even several gunpowder power weapons as backup. It will also have a Revival System, which will use an Orbin to generate healing energy, to heal or revive its operator in times of danger. Yeah, I believe the Ion units are about 70 feet tall. Some of them get even bigger than that, but, uh... Yeah, the Potter Modder gets dwarfed pretty quickly by, uh... The tech in, uh... Later series here. <laughs> the armor plating will be made using Cur de Lagon Alloy. Whatever the hell Cur de Lagon Alloy is. Cur de Lagon is the most fitting material to use, given that it is the most capable we have and access to in all regards. For data regarding strength, see files on Gospel Plan. Current progress. New engines. Development is proceeding smoothly in line with the plans drawn up by Preventor Professor Novartis. <laughs> Tests have also confirmed that they are already capable of providing power to the actuators. <laughs> That's true. The iron units do get slagged. Just goes to show that, uh, science can't compete with the goddess. However, the professor has raised concerns about the low responsiveness of the flight engine. This is especially true for the anti-gravity generator. He concluded that the engine as it stands cannot be put into actual use. The possibility of using boosters to provide additional propulsion is under consideration. Development of the actuators is experiencing significant difficulty, as it isn't possible to simply use the same ones as other archaisms. The increased size of the main weaponry means the archaism's, archaism's weight during combat is significant, and as a result, problems have been occurring in durability tests, especially with leg joints. It may be possible to make improvements in this area using precise control so the weight burden is spread evenly, rather than focused on a single point. <laughs> uh, good luck catching a Gumi. Main Armaments The Orbital Energy Cannons that will serve as its primary armaments have been successfully tested. However, by order of Professor Novartis, the possibility of them becoming twin mounts is being analyzed, so they have yet to be equipped. The new Orbital Engines are expected to be able to provide enough energy to compensate for the necessary increase in output. Control System Experiments regarding the control system are currently ongoing. For the results of the experiments that have been carried out so far, see a separate entry. Experiment Results Tests of the control system continue to be performed. However, none of the test subjects have been able to realize the expected level of precision we are aiming for. The results of the main test conducted by Professor Novartis and his team can be viewed above. Test Subject Subject A1, Abnormality during Phase 2, Comatose. Test Subject B3, Abnormality during Phase 3, Cardiac Arrest. Test Subject C1, Abnormality during Phase 1, 
Insanity. Test Subject D7. Abnormality during Phase 2. Comatose. Test Subject E3. Abnormality during Phase 2. Cardiac Arrest. Test Subject F2. Abnormality during Phase 2. Comatose. Test Subject G4. Abnormality during Phase 3. Comatose. Test Subject H1. Abnormality during Phase 2. Comatose. Test Subject. Subject 16. Abnormality during Phase 4. Mental Breakdown. Oh, sorry, that's I6. <laughs> As can be seen, all of the test subjects fail to adapt to the control system. Nonetheless, the Society continues to supply test subjects, and we intend to keep performing further experiments. Future Development We have received word from the Society that development is to be temporarily frozen. Their reasoning is that the stability of the control system is in question. From now on, only test subjects carefully chosen by the Society will be taking part in connection tests. <laughs> so many, so many killers. But hey, they finally got one to work. Subject R3. Successfully completed all four testing phases. Note, the subject did experience a small degree of flashbacks. Test subject R3. Succeeded in communicating with Potter Motter. Ascertaining the Society's intentions in regards to resuming development. Subject R3 has succeeded in operating Potter Motter. Ascertaining the Society's intentions in regards to resuming development. Gordy's class experiment report finished. Receive 10,000 Mira. Well, that was a nice chunk of change for a short little door there. Well, I have my equipment set up, but apparently my arts just suck. <laughs> like that should be a gold gem. That's that's just, that's just obvious. And Ren's a caster, so I don't know what she's doing with an attack four on. Um... <laughs> oh god, Naruto filler is the worst. I, I feel bad for anyone who had to, you know, actually watch all that and, you know, felt like they had to. Because that's silly. You have better things to do with your time. Live your best life. Uh... And I don't know why I'm carrying around an, an Absorb Quartz, but this could probably be something else. Like that. That's probably actually just better. Because we know that Cloak Override sent, so... Yeah, I'm just gonna go with this instead. So yeah, now I have some actual arts on, uh... On Ren here, so I can actually, you know, cast spells worth a damn. Alright, let's, uh... Let's cube out to the, uh next uh, monument here. <laughs> oh god. That's that sounds horrible. I'm I'm glad I just read the manga after uh Fuck, where did I actually stop watching the anime? I think it was like partway during the Sasuke like retrieval arc or whatever. It was like they fought the bone guy and I was like, yeah, I'm done with this. I don't... I don't care about this anymore. Um... This isn't the one. 
forget which one I'm looking for. I think it's the red one, but I could be mistaken. Oh well. Yeah, this is the one I'm looking for. The Lord of Phantasma does decree. Here lies the impregnable fortress. Place your hand on this monument, the Divine Blade's successor among your number. Great. Don't have a clue what impregnable fortress could be referring to, but I think we all know who we're going to need to have with us this, with this time. But, but, I suppose there's no point in debating if I'm fit to be called his successor. No one else seems to match the description after all. Like, not Estelle, not Joshua, not Annalise. Nah, it's Richard. I mean, Divine Blade's successor is a very, uh... It, it leaves a lot of people are actually could, could considerably be, be considered his successor. Like, Sherizard Nagat or Agate learned from him. Uh, I mean, I mentioned Estelle and Joshua already, they are his kids. Richard, obviously, Annalise, because, I mean, they both studied under Yunka Fai. So, you know... <laughs> but whatever. We do actually need to bring Richard with us, so... Here we are. Let's go ahead and, uh... Bust our way inside. <laughs> oh god, that sounds horrible. Sounds like, you know, the worst thing you could experience. Now that riddle makes sense. What better place to describe as an impregnable fortress than this? Welcome to Laceton Fortress. We're gonna walk right in through the front door this time. <laughs> Where are we, Kevin? This is Laceton Fortress, the biggest Royal Army stronghold in the country. And I can already tell we're gonna get a real fun welcome. That we are. <laughs> ah. Well, aren't we in for a treat? I think it's safe to say that whoever is waiting for us, and I can think of a f few who may be, we're gonna need to give these battles our all. This isn't an area we can conquer with anything less than our top form. <laughs> I can hardly wait to get started! And for some reason, you can go onto the Sold Out Army Road and pick up a Zerum capsule behind you? That's a real dick move for a chest. Uh... Alrighty then. So, Wasting Fortress, we're back. Let's take a look around and see what we can find. Wait. That sounds like... Everyone, spread out! Oh. Oh my. We don't stand a chance. Indeed, we have nothing to gain by staying here any longer. Retreat! Okay, so I guess we can't go to the landing port just yet. Uh, luckily for us, uh, we can still stay in the main area here. What were we even supposed to do against that? Truly, all we could do was run. Bah. Powder Matter could have made work of that thing in no time. I doubt we're meant to do anything against it. It's more likely to serve as a warning that we shouldn't go this way for now. How about we investigate elsewhere instead? Works for me. As long as we're alive, there's always a chance we'll be able to get through here later. So yeah, we're not allowed to go to the uh, docks there. The landing port, rather. The command center is locked, so we can't go there. 
and it appears the barracks are locked as well. Not a whole lot of choice to where we have to go, so just uh, push your way north. I'm gonna check my check my equipment. Mute, freeze, petrify. I'm just gonna get faint prevention on here if I have it. I should have it. Yeah. Okay. So, we can head into the courtyard here, but there isn't a whole lot around here of interest. There is, uh, this room, though. This is actually the place we found Professor Russell in the first game. But, uh, he's not here right now. I suppose this is where I should welcome you all. Lieutenant Colonel Sid? So you're our first opponent. Seems like you've been through quite a lot since we last met, Father Graham. I certainly hadn't expected this was what was going to happen back when we met in Gransel. All this still feels like a bad dream to me, to be honest. You remember all that happened under Gransel Cathedral then? I do. Can't be sure exactly when the me that stands before you was created here. But I can say it must have been after that if my memories are anything to go by. Huh. That's interesting. It's good to see you again too, Richard. This was hardly how I envisioned our reunion going, but it's good to be able to have one all the same. I could say the same to you. That being said, I wasn't expecting a soldier as formidable as you to be our first opponent. This bodes poorly for us. Ah, <laughs> don't count yourselves out just yet. Even if I have no intention of being defeated. Well, he's got lots of buddies. Apparently, he can just summon soldiers from the ether. Bah! We're surrounded! On my honor is the former garrison commander of the Laysan Fortress. I, Lieutenant Colonel Maximilian Sid, will defeat you! Uh, well, good luck, buddy. We'll see what you got. Well, luckily for me, Impede's still really good. And instant death does work on these guys. Just not all the time. Uh, well, whatever. Luckily for us, Kevin casts spells really fast here, so... Death Scream takes care of most of those guys. <laughs> oh.
Alright, this fight is just about done. Ren may have spent the whole fight uh, blind and fainted, but uh, we won. <laughs> eh, I just got some recovery items for it. Nothing too special. I expected no less from you, Richard. With the Knight of the Growls Ritter on your side, my loss was likely guaranteed from the start. Not at all. Breaking through your defensive formation was a real challenge. It's clear you've already surpassed me as a commander. Oh, hardly. I've still got a long way to go before I can say that with confidence. And while I wouldn't ordinarily tell you as much, I won't waste this chance fate has granted me. I still deeply regret that you decided to leave the army behind, Richard. <laughs> that was how I felt about Brigadier General Bright, and I'm sure you remember where that led me. Our paths have parted, but we both inherited at least part of him. I have the path of a sword, and you have the path of a soldier. While they may differ, we can both work towards the same goal. <laughs> You're right, I suppose. Take this. Lieutenant Colonel Sid handed Richard the barracks key. The key to the barracks? As it seems you're aware, I'm but the first of several opponents you'll face here. You'll want to prepare yourselves. The worst is still yet to come. Kevin. Rius. Please. Do all you can to lead everyone trapped in this world safely back out of it. I have a feeling you're the only ones who can. How could we say no? Leave it to us. We will. Oh. Seems like a pretty dutiful guy. Well, we should move on. He's shown us the path forward. We shouldn't let his goodwill go to waste. Got it. We should make our way to the barracks, then. Alright. Sit down. Let's, uh... Go to our next destination. Luckily it's not too far away, the barracks are just over here. What's in here? This is Layston Fortress's first barracks. We should be able to open it using the key we received from the Lieutenant Colonel. Good call, let's give it a shot then. This is only one of many such barracks in the fortress, so it's not all that large inside. We shouldn't need to spend too long in here. Got it. Well, we don't need to spend too long in here, but make sure you uh, loot all the areas you can. There are a few soldiers lying in wait. And there's even a trap chest. How quaint, we haven't had one of these in a while. Um, nobody's even close enough to mortal punishment. Not that we really need to. This is going to die before Ren even gets to cast a spell. Yeah. That was not even remotely a challenge. Like, even less than a challenge than this normally is right now. But we did get a key out of it, so... It's clearly important. We also found the Force Flag, a weapon for stealth. Luckily, the key we got opens up this door for us. And nothing in that room, so no point going that way.
Let's go ahead and make another save before heading in here, and see who we have to fight next. I've been waiting for you, Your Excellency. What? So our next opponent is you, Canone. What a tragedy that it, it is that we should be forced to meet again under these circumstances. What did I ever do to deserve turning my blade against the only man I've ever duly served? But please, never doubt even for a second that I'm doing this against my will. I would never even dream of fighting you if I had a choice. I understand perfectly well, Canon. But if I may, I would rather you stopped calling me Your Excellency. It was never fit a fitting title for a mere colonel to begin with, and now I don't even have that. I would rather you simply called me Sir, like you usually do in the office. I have grown very fond of it. I Your Excellency... Uh, I'm sorry. Just while we're here, please let me call you the way I'd like to. The Canon Amalthea who stands before you is a symbol of my failure to truly move forward from the past. And something tells me if that symbol were to be defeated by you, then it will finally allow me to put the past where it belongs, and be born anew. Canone. Very well. In that case, do as you will. S still Just what are you doing here, child? It's good to see you again, too! Not since I gave you that gospel as a present, I believe. I don't think I ever got the chance to ask if you liked it, did I? You've got some nerve acting friendly with me after all you put us through. I'm going to enjoy having this opportunity to punish you for your insolence. I hope you're ready for this. <laughs> Go ahead and try. Well, I can respect the whole wannabe reborn thing. But I see she hasn't ditched any of her old high-handed ways. Silence, you! Yeah, looks like she's bringing some Jaegers. Well, Your Excellency, I have no intention of holding back. So are you ready to begin? At any time. My Richard and uh, Kanoa voices are too similar. Makes it very awkward. Oh well. Let's end this. Go. Alright, let's see if, uh, Ren here actually gets a turn this time. Wow, she stole our CP, what a jerk. <laughs> All right, we're almost done with this fight. Just have Rius land the finishing blow. And there we go. <laughs> and we got a whole bunch of Seppin. Nice. And some healing items as well. I knew I wouldn't stand a chance against you, Your Excellency. 
The rest of you fought passably as well, I suppose. <laughs> Thanks. That was fun enough. Hmm. <laughs> All of you should make sure you don't get in His Excellency's way in the battles ahead. You'll be facing the strongest warriors in the borough. He doesn't need you stopping him from fighting at his best. Of course. Canon. Seems there's still something important left for me to do after all. However, I believe that by clearing the trials ahead, I'll finally be able to do it. It's thanks to you that I feel ready enough to face those trials head on. So thank you. You don't have to thank me. I don't think there's anything more I could say for you right now. All I do is pray that you safely overcome the trials before you, and return to the real world unharmed. Thank you. I will. Huh. And for our troubles, we get the command center key. Anyway, let's shuffle on to the heart of the fortress. That's the key to the command center, right? That's correct. It's the building directly in front of you when you enter the main courtyard from the entrance. This key should allow us to gain access to it. Alright. I do like when they make things simple for us. So. We'll have to head into the command center now. This building is the command center. Wow. Was the army compensating for something with this thing or what? Looks like there's about three floors to it. That right? Correct. The building was deliberately designed to confuse would-be intruders. And unless the layout has changed significantly compared to the real fortress, one of the doors in here will lead to the staircase leading up. I see. Alright, shall we continue? Richard, unlock the door. Everyone. These trials will be like none we've ever faced before. Yet there is but one clear path for us to take. So I must ask, are you with me? It is only when we fight together that we can overcome the great wall that stands before us, and attain victory! Yeah! Wow, Richard, channeling your inner Lloyd Bannings there, or what? <laughs> uh... Anyway, let's check this side first, see what we can find. Amazing and sparkling. A Curia Bomb. And the Blind Two Ports. Okay. And over here is the Star Door. Bring to me the Repenting Patriot. Only then shall the door open. Well, I have the Repenting Patriot with me right now. But... For the sake of story purposes, let's uh, hold off on the storage for just a little while longer. I mean, I'll get to it eventually, of course, but uh, I can wait. A, I can wait a little bit. We've got a uh, fortress to impregnate. After all, this this fortress is apparently impregnable. But, uh, Kevin has never met a fortress he can't penetrate. Wait, that sounded terrible. <laughs> anyway, break into all the jail cells, get all the chests here. Because the one you're looking for is, uh, there's a certain one with a key in it. Like this guy here. The C1 key. That will allow us to go further into the command center. And should hopefully lead us towards, uh, whoever our big boss is in here. Maybe it actually is just Big Boss. Eh, who can say, though? Who can say? Alright. Oh, there's a Wind Gem in this one. Zerum powder over here. 
and tear all bomb there. So, you know, some nice things. There's a dude hanging out in the uh, closet there. Best of luck to you, dude. But, uh, we've got other business to take care of. So we want to backtrack just a little bit to grab this treasure chest. A long barrel three. And now we can head back the way we need to go. Which is to the left. And up the stairs. So now we're on the second floor. Again, not much to say about this dungeon. I do kind of like the design of it, but... Obviously, Laced in Fortress was it was pretty boring to begin with, so even though it's a bit different, it's still not exciting. So that treasure chest is taunting us, but uh, it has the next key to move on in the area, so. We want to make sure we pick that up. There's three treasure chests on the other side of that barrier, so we'll need to find a way to grab those. Luckily for us, that's a pretty easy thing to find. Curia Bomb, Press Charm Plus, and more Sepith. Woohoo. Actually, I think we want to head all the way down here first. Yeah, get that worthless S tablet before uh, moving on. Alright, we found ourselves a stone monument, which means we've probably got another boss of some, uh, some strong power to him, or her, depending on who we end up facing. So, let's save. And let's see what we got. What time do you call this? You're late, all of you! What? General Morgan? What is the meaning of all this? I get dragged here by some bizarre masked hoodlum, stripped of my free will, and now being used like some sort of puppet? This is humiliating! I've never been so damned infuriated in all my years! General. Uh, looks like he hasn't changed a bit. Wow, this old man sure has impressive vocal cords. His voice is too loud. Well, I suppose getting angry won't do me any good. You all have my sympathies for the situation you've been forced into. Richard. I have plenty I want to say to you, and a lot I could say to you. But I'm not sure I'm the best person to do so, so I'll let you off for now. Thank you, General. Regardless, I think we've wasted enough time talking. There's no avoiding a battle between us. We may as well get started on it. A, a halberd? Adios, I'm not sure when I last saw one of those. Don't underestimate his weapon. In his hands, it is extremely deadly. Before the mechanization of the army began, that halberd claimed the lives of countless foes on the battlefield. <laughs> ha! I haven't had cause to wield this since the martial arts tournament two years ago, however. But if you struggle against an old man like me, your odds of success in the trials ahead are grim indeed. Don't hold back! Show me what you've got! All right, time to fight General Morgan. Generally kind of a pain in the ass. Whew, 
Well, that move was a little bit toasty. Morgan sure has a lot of health. It'll take me a while to cut through all this. Alright. Took care of one of those guards. Oh no. Oh no, he just ripped out all of her sepith. What a mean dude. Don't you know that's rude? Well, I mean, if you're gonna miss Kevin, that's a bit more forgivable. We're just gonna wail on him until he, until he's defeated. That seems like the uh, best solution. <laughs> well, if he's just gonna miss, then I guess this isn't, uh, this isn't gonna be difficult. There we go. There we go. Morgan down. Just one more boss to go. Well, that's something of a relief. Perhaps you might be able to pull off a miracle with that strength. And then our final foe is who I fear it is. Indeed it is. And no matter how strong he may be, he is a human like the rest of us. No man is invincible. Pour everything you have into the battle, and you may yet be able to defeat him. Understood. <laughs> Still, I'm a little disappointed. The thought that he may actually be defeated in battle, and I won't be there to see it happen is a frustrating one. Should we ever meet again? I'd like to know how the battle went. Oh god, we have to fight Cassius? Oh god, we have to fight Cassius Bright. No! Oh god, we're fucked. We're fucked. This is the fight of our lives. And that it will be. I suspect this was always an inevitability. Especially as long as I am here. I may not be in any position to ask, but I'd appreciate it if you are all if you all would lend me your full strength. This battle should allow me to finally put the past behind me, so I can truly move forward. But I can't win it alone. <laughs> After a plea like that, how could we refuse? <laughs> so we get to fight the legendary hero the professor was so scared of, huh? I can hardly wait to see what he's like. His name and strength are e known even in the Grawls Ritter. I'm not sure how well I'll be able to fare against him, but I intend to fight the very best I can. Thank you, all of you. Our next opponent is perhaps the strongest in the land. No underhanded tricks will work against him. 
Our only hope is to do as the general said, and pour everything we have into fighting him. May the goddess smile upon us. Right. We have to fight Cassius. We have to fight Cassius, Bright. God. Frick. Snack. God. Yeah. 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 Oh boy, this is gonna be fun times. Fun times are gonna be had. Alright. Let's fix this. I like the death thing. It's really neat. But, uh... I really should get her up in the turn order. Speed is... Speed is the way of life, you know? What the fuck? What the fuck? I don't even have a quartz in here. Why? What possible reason? What possible reason is that... What? I didn't have this set up like this. Like, yeah, I don't mind having a water gem here, but it should be, you know, actual, you know, water element. Oh my god. Oh my god. Like, EP Cut 4? Come on, I'm not gonna be using arts on him. Don't be ridiculous. Game? Are you kidding me? Okay. Housekeeping out of the way. Let's go recover up again. Uh, yeah, let's make another one of those. Sure. And one of these, why not? Okay. I literally- I just have so much sepit that I have no reason not to use it, is basically why I just made all those. Alright. Last floor of the area. We still got a bit of walking to do. Luckily for us, the random encounters are not an issue, so don't even have to think twice about those. Just grab the items. Just grab the items. Onyx gem, that's pretty nice. Two hundred of each sepith, also nice. I guess we're just going to be uh, wandering around circles until we find what we need. Yin Yang. Let's head down this one. This looks promising. There we go. The last key we need, the C3 key. And that's our last treasure chest in the area. So Cassius isn't too far away here. Alright. Make another save.
I should have some nice, uh, items for cooking. I should hope. And, uh, made too many things, and I'm just missing one recipe now. I should buy more acerbic tomatoes. Oh, well, whatever. We... We do what we do. And... Just about ready. Last thing I want to do... Put that back on Grail Sphere. Honestly, I think this is better. This is probably better. Okay. What's my formation like? This is... That's more than acceptable. You made it, I see. Brigadier General. I thought the ordeal of revolving around the Oriole was over. But it looks like that was premature of me. I doubt even Ragnar saw this coming. What about you and the Grawls, Ritter Kevin? Did you? Nope. Took us completely by surprise. Although I can't say for sure whether the bigwigs at the top of the Congregation for the Sacraments had any idea this might happen. I do wonder. Well, I suppose there's no point in debating that now, anyway. Let's get down to business. As you know, I'm the third of the Guardians. If you defeat me, you can move on. If you can't, the road ahead will forever remain closed. Of course, you already know as much, don't you? Indeed. We came fully resolved to deal with what we knew was waiting for us. Defeating you will allow me to finally cut down my hesitations and move forward. And for that reason, I will hold back nothing. That's what I wanted to hear. Hmm. What's with the funny stare, young lady? You're a real monster, aren't you? I should be able to sense how strong you are. Why can't I? <laughs> I manipulate both the Void and the Helix as my form. You might be a genius, but even you won't be able to get a handle on my capabilities so easily. And while I've got the chance, you should drop by our house with Estelle and Joshua sometime. We'd welcome you with open arms. A and why would I ever want to do that? It's good to have the chance to meet you, Divine Blade. My name is Rius Argent, a squire of the Gralsritter. Argent? You're Rufina's younger sister, aren't you? Sir? You've met Rufina? Not in person, but her name was known by a small portion of those in the Bracer Guild, Myself included. She was known as perhaps the most skilled negotiator in the whole of the church, and an expert at problem solving. In many ways, her way of things her way of doing things seemed more akin to a bracer's than a knight's. She was known as the Thousand Arms, I believe. Indeed. And what you've heard about her was true, too. I heard at one point there were even talks about the guild trying to get her to leave the church and join them. Oh, I can confirm as much. As long as she wasn't a Dominion, we figured the chances of her joining weren't zero, and it was worth a shot. Unfortunately, 
She lost her life before those negotiations could seriously get going. I'm sorry for your loss. She was quite the woman by the sounds of it. Thank you for your kind words. Well, I think that's enough talking. It's time we got started. As I'm sure you understand already, I couldn't hold back even if I wanted to. So, Richard, I only have one thing to say to you. Yes, sir. God. Oh, fuck. We're gonna die. Defeat me. That is all. I shall. I'm just gonna enjoy Silver Wool for a second. I'm sorry. Alright. Alright. Time to take the offensive. Except, you know, might be a bit harder because he hits like a beast. So, get Ren to buffing. Make sure he can't recover anytime soon. Damn, Richard's a poet. That's three guards down. Man, that was pathetic. Alright. Oh, whatever. That was a nasty little spell, that's for sure. Alright, Kevin, get to healing. Do, do, do. 
Oh, he's bringing the buffs now. Oh god. Yeah, but he's not fucking around, that's for sure. Alright. Um, gotta go fast, I guess. Fuck. God, why is there three of these in a row? Ugh. I guess he's recovering some health no matter what. Alright. Um... We're just gonna Ogre Slash him and hopefully that'll solve our problems. But, thanks to the power of Richard spamming crafts, we were able to survive. <laughs> and we get actual experience for this fight. Not a bunch, mind you, but, you know, actual experience. And 77 of each Sepith, and another Divine Blades emblem. Ugh. I think all those rumors about his strength were underselling him. <sighs> we did it. Congratulations. That was a well-earned victory. So, Richard, have you finally been able to clear aside your hesitations? I believe so. No matter where my life may end up taking me, the swordsmanship I learned from you will always have a place and a use. As such, I intend to keep following the path I've chosen for myself. Pride in my heart. Well said. Although I can't pretend not to be a tad disappointed. If you return to the army, I could have piled all my work onto you and Sid. Looks like I'm not going to be able to retire anytime soon. <laughs> I'm afraid not. But know this. As my final duty as a member of the military, I will resolve this crisis and return everyone to the real world. Have no doubt of that. I'll be counting on you. Regardless, my time here is short, so I'll make this brief, Kevin. By now, you must have a fairly good idea who the Lord of Phantasma is, correct? Yeah, I just need one last push to be completely certain. I'll probably get that push in the next area, too. I see. It's not really my place to say anything more to you. So I would, I would ask only that you not forget this. No man is an island. No matter how much they may wish to isolate themselves from others, no one can live their lives truly alone. Oh. <laughs> uh, huh. 
Well, we have but one area remaining now. After what we've accomplished here, I'm not sure we have anything to fear. <laughs> Indeed. Let's head back to the scenic route, check the final monument. That way we can find out what the condition for opening it is. Alrighty then. So, let's heal up. Um, and before heading to the... God damn it. I didn't check the monument on the first floor. I'm an idiot. I'm... Oh my... Oh my god. Ugh, fuck. Alright. It's like, yeah, I'm just gonna warp to the beginning and, you know, do that. But no, 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 no. I have to do this the hard way. I can't... I can't do this the easy way. I have to do this the annoyingly... Lemon difficult way. That's not it. I was like, oh yeah, this is the one here. No, it's not. It's it's over here. It's tucked away in the corner. Uh... <laughs> like seriously, how did I forget to interact with this monument? It's li it's literally right there. Ugh. Okay. Did that. Last thing we need to do, check the landing port. We have to defeat Cassius to gain access to here. But there's some really, really nice treasure chests if you do. The Super Gladiator Headband and Belt. Along with the uh, Divine Blade Emblem we got, the all stats up except your range. It's, uh... It's very... Very nice. And to be honest, I should probably just put one on Kevin. Because, uh, you know, spamming Grail Sphere is uh, going to be pretty useful uh, at some point here. And as uh, proof of defeating the Divine Blade, Richard's gonna put this on. Uh, I don't know why, but I feel like Ren should have, you know, better art stat than Rius? Maybe that's just me being silly. I know I am pretty silly sometimes. I guess I could load her up on Crimson Eyes if I really needed to. That's... that's also just... just silly. Was there more to this door? I'll have to check that out later, I guess. Um, sorry, don't mind me. I see. I see what it wants from me now. Holy crap, I'm dropping frames like crazy. Ugh. This is not going to be a great episode, is it? Well. I mean, obviously, it could be worse. 
but yeah, we're gonna warp and do uh, starter 12 right now. While we've got Richard in our party. I shall grant you a memory fragment and my blessing. The city of Ruan. RNA Research. Ruan Office. Oh my, look at all of this. I hope it will prove useful. I see. You've sure found out a lot. With this many potential sales routes, I've got nothing to fear. I'll be able to make my move into the Erebonian capital as soon as I'm ready with this kind of information. You asked us to investigate the current situation with regard to Orban sales in Erebonia, so I sent you my investigation around stores in the region itself. And you did a fantastic job, too. Still, the problem of transport remains. After all, or old Borden's got his grubby hands all over the international liners already. It's true that the Borden family has preferential access to 40% of the load capacity of international airliners leaving Liberal for Erebonia. However, they are no longer the only available option. There are now private carriers as well. Here are some supplementary materials regarding that issue. My, you certainly come prepared, don't you? Well, this request ended up taking a little longer than originally anticipated. Consider this a little extra on us in exchange. I like those who think two steps ahead. You sure you don't want to come and work for me? I'd pay you handsomely. I'm certainly think I'm certainly flattered you think highly enough of my skills to offer. I'm not sure I have what it takes to be successful in the cutthroat world of business, though. I'm a rather timid man, you see. Oh, come now, you can't fool me. Oh well, do keep my offer in mind if you would. Please, allow us to escort you out. Oh, since I have you here, maybe I should give you one more thing to look into. I've already had Simon get started, but I'm not sure he's up to the task. I'd be happy to help if I can. Will this be another request to research a foreign market? It certainly will. Oh, look what you got over there. Perfect. This place right here. Or its state. That's an unusual choice. It's quite a small place. That just makes it easier to seize a majority in the market. Small as it is, it's not like it isn't accessible by airliner. And what market mi there may be there is all but free for the taking right now. So you want us to research the potential size of the market there, in other words. Shall we focus entirely on the Orban market? Or broaden the scope of our investigation and look into the market in general? Market in general. Do you think you can do it? With ease. I'll get in touch with one of our staff members stationed near the state right away, and begin weighing our options. Now that's what I wanted to hear. I'll be back here next week anyway. We can discuss the details then. Ta-ta! Until then. Take care. Hmm. Or it's quite far inland. Aren't the Ryan's brothers in that general area of the continent? Yes, they are. I'll get in contact with them later. Thank you. <laughs> She's not a merchant of bows for nothing, is she? She's always coming in with such interesting, ambitious requests. She's not half as ambitious as you are. I think you may be overestimating me a little there. Well, can you show our next visitor in? Certainly. Business time with Richard. 
Attorney at Law. Uh, hello there, Alan. Sorry for dropping in on you again. I just wanted to get your input on another little something regarding the city's finances. Oh, that won't be a bother at all. Please, take a seat. So what can I... So what exactly can I help you with today? Yeah, geez, show the mayor out, but don't show Murano out. Good job. All seems to be ga going rather well with this business now, don't you think? Indeed. Although I admit it's taking me time to adjust to my days being so... peaceful. I do miss having a sense of tension in my life. That's something you'll just have to live with, I'm afraid. We're civilians now, not soldiers. That's true enough. In any case, it's an honor to be able to live and work with you in the city where you were born, Your Excellency. Canone. I really would prefer it if you addressed me as Sir now. Uh, uh, my apologies, Sir. <laughs> There's no need to apologize. Well, I think we should probably go inside. I'm not sure I like the look of the sky. Huh? It couldn't be. Sir, is something the matter? No, oh, it's nothing of much importance. I just noticed that we seem to have mistakenly received another letter intended for the mayor. It's understandable that it keeps happening given that this building was previously his, but it is a tad troublesome nonetheless. I suppose I'd better, better go and deliver it to him. It could be something important. Uh, now, sir. Couldn't it wait? It seems like it's going to start raining any minute. It's not too far. Even if it does start raining, I won't be exposed to it for long. Can I ask you to handle the regular reports in the meantime? Uh, yes, of course. What are you doing, Richard? Richard, what are you doing? Ugh. There's no mistaking. There's no mistaking it. Yeah, I got a cold. Richard, no. The letter was sealed in a special way we used in the intelligence division. The letter itself is a meaningless decoy. The real message is concealed in how the envelope itself is sealed. It means, come to the landing port. Someone from the Intelligence Division is calling me, in hopes of speaking to me. Most likely because they bear a deep-seated resentment towards me, and what I did to them. And I have a duty to go and see them. After all, I was their commander. I was the one who pushed their lives off the rails, and ruined their future. I've been waiting for you. So it was you, Sender. Indeed. It's good to see you again, Colonel. I'm pleased to see you're still well. Eh, Sender sent a letter. That's... That's funny, but, like, in a dumb way. I'm not a Colonel anymore, Sender. Though I feel as though saying as much has become a hobby. No one around me seems willing to correct themselves. Oh, I'm aware. But today I intend to address you as Colonel, nonetheless. I called you here because I have something that I need to ask you. I hope you can forgive me for forcing you to come out here with the weather so poor. If I can answer your questions, I will. Don't feel as if you need to hold back on my account. If you can't accept something in the answer I give you, by all means say so. Then I'll get straight to the point. Why did you leave the army behind, Colonel? What happened to your love for your country? You're not a real patriot. I see you at least returned to the military. I was relieved to see that in truth. 
you were always an exceptionally capable soldier, even back in the military academy. If you hadn't had the misfortune of meeting me, if you hadn't had the misfortune of being caught up in my foolishness, you would probably be a field officer by now. I'm truly sorry about what I did to you. Oh, don't get me wrong, Colonel. I don't in any way blame you or harbor resentment for what you did. You thought about what was best for this country more than anyone else I know. Your patriotism was genuine and heartfelt. I don't regret following you at all. I'm honored that I could. It's certainly true that doing so has become a significant obstacle in my chances of a promotion. But I couldn't care less about that. As long as I can continue to serve in the military, to serve the country I love with all my heart, I am happy. Know that I harbor no ill feelings towards you regarding the past. But... What are you doing now? You used to worry for this country's future more than any of us. You cared for it more than any other. Yet instead of picking yourself up and trying to work for your nation again, you left the army behind. Now you're running some sort of company that deals with the rich? Just what happened to your patriotism? I beg of you, return to the military. You're a capable man. Those skills of yours would be a valuable asset to the force, and it's where you should be using them. I'm sorry, Sender. I cannot ever return to the army again. Why? Why, Colonel? You've repented more than enough for your actions. Both General Morgan and Brigadier General Bright actively desire your return. I, and all the other soldiers in my position, would be overjoyed to have you in our ranks again. So why? Why do you look at me with that sad expression and tell me that it's not possible? Why would you apologize to me? Make no mistake, Sender. I haven't abandoned my love for my country. It burns as brightly in my heart as it ever did. But what I did was... What I did was truly terrible. I organized a coup d'etat, destabilizing this nation and disrupting the lives of countless people. Thanks to the help of all of those around me, I was able to realize what a foolish mistake I made. And yet in my heart, I feel exactly the same way I always did. I'm not sure what you mean. In spite of all that happened, my love for my country is unchanged. I still feel the blind desire to do anything I can to aid Liberal, no matter how reckless or dangerous it might be. I'm the same man I was when I plotted that coup d'etat. Not a thing has changed. That thought sender terrifies me. That you didn't leave the military because you had lost your love for your country? You're saying that you left it because you still love your country? Forgive me. I have no right to be making excuses to you and trying to justify myself. Not after I dragged all of you down with me and ruined your lives forever. I truly am sorry for what I did to you and all of the other members of the division. Y you. No, you. Please, don't misunderstand. I didn't leave the army in an attempt to run from my own weakness. Nor did I leave it because I was ashamed of the treatment I received for my actions. After what happened, I thought long and hard about what I should have done instead of what I did. Trying to work out where I'd gone wrong. As I did that, I noticed something. Something vitally important that I had failed to realize up until that point. After setting up the Intelligence Division, I began gathering information and using it to protect LeBurl. Yet, thinking about it now, I didn't know the first thing about the nature of information at the time. Information isn't something that exists alone. It only exists when people use it, and see it as something of worth. Furthermore, the value of that information can change radically, depending on the position and perspective of those who look at it. I can't help but wonder if overlooking this simple fact was what caused my patriotism to start to become more of a force for harm than good. Somewhere along the line, I started to believe that only information I saw as valuable was of any importance. And as a result, I ended up wanting power in order to compensate for the weakness of my own heart. 
thinking back, I think what I really needed was a different perspective through which to view information. One separate from the military. One that doesn't see a country or a people's way of life as a system, or as numbers and absolutes. I needed to be collecting information that was disadvantageous to Liberal too, rather than cast it all aside. I needed to view us and the surrounding nations in a variety of lights, while collecting a wide variety of information from a freer perspective. So you believe the company you're running now is capable of doing that? Yes, I do. I can't say for sure that this will allow me to avoid repeating my past mistakes. Perhaps there was something more important that I should have been doing before giving thought to any of this to begin with. But in the end, I came to that conclusion that Liberal needs a fresh perspective, and then I resolved to leave the army. If I need a means to gather intel, it can make another intelligence division. That's for Brigadier General Bright to worry about, not me. Still, the civilian population has no such group or organization. It's never had one. I doubt anyone in the civilian world has ever thought to create one in order to gather and ac accurately analyze information either. That was why I, a civilian like every other, chose to establish RNA research. Believing that I am the right person to be the first to do so. You truly don't have any intention of returning to the military, do you? If I said there wasn't a part of me that longed to return to my days of active service, I'd be lying. But I'm hoping that through this, I'll be able to become another I by which to support this nation. And I see my current occupation as a new way to show my love for my country. I wonder if that makes any sense. You're... a coward. No doubt every word you're saying is objectively correct. That's how you've always been. There's never been room for rebuttal in your arguments. But Colonel? You're also no longer the man who swore to forge this kingdom's future with his own two hands. Goodbye, Colonel. We will never meet again. That's not true. That's not true at all, Sender. I... I've chosen the path I now walk, believing it to be right, certainly. But even I don't know for sure what if what I'm doing is correct. Even now, I'm terrified of the possibility that I might be making the wrong choice. I worry that the road I walk might be the makings of yet another grave mistake. I just don't have the same power that Brigadier General Bright does. I really am hopeless. Sir. You didn't have to come out here in the rain. We should return to the office. You'll catch a cold staying out here much longer. Canone, I... I'm sure he's just having trouble coming to terms with his new life, too. He just can't forget the fervent enthusiasm of the Intelligence Division. As if he doesn't feel like he belongs in the world that comes after it. The day will eventually come when he'll be able to understand what you said. That's exactly what happened to me, you know. True enough, I suppose. <laughs> You're right. Shall we be going then, Canone? Yes, sir. Wasn't expecting to end up quite this soaked. Are you alright? I'm fine, don't worry about me. This actually brings back fond memories of the survival training I underwent back at the academy. I do think you should go get changed into some dry clothes though, sir. A little rain never hurt anyone. I don't believe I was half bad at my own survival training, you know. Even then. An encrypted call. Dylan's did mention that he had some information of interest in his report earlier. Perhaps this relates to that. Sounds possible. Which would mean that something has happened over in the Republic. Yes, it's me. Can you please stop calling me that? Yes, that's right. Yes. 
Yes. In the Eastern Quarter. We don't have anyone there yet, thinking of it. Alright. I'll look into it as best I can. Right. You be careful, too. Had something happened? Another Jaeger Corps has entered the Eastern Quarter. A sizable one, too. The Red Constellation. Really? There seems to be rather a lot of activity on the Jaeger front as of late. Their arrival makes it very likely that the power struggle there will begin to worsen, too. I doubt the old Intelligence Division network is going to be sufficient to fully stay on top of the situation. Huh. I think I may have to head there personally. Well, shit, I guess we're going to Calvard. <laughs> I still have doubts about what I'm doing. Nothing but my love for my country has changed. Nothing at all. So, is it even possible for me to find and walk the right path this time? Is it truly possible for any mortal to forge the correct path through life? I don't know. But all I can do is try to follow the path I believe to be right, in hopes I'm not mistaken. Believing in those who've supported me, and worked to right my wrongs? Sir. Is something wrong, sir? Uh, oh. You're here, Kano? I did tell you that you didn't need to come and see me off, you know. You did, but I'm afraid that simply won't do. Seeing off their superiors is the duty of a subordinate. Perhaps in the military? That's no longer the world we live in. There's no need to act like a soldier anymore. Oh, one more thing. Please do take good care of things in the office while I'm gone. I think the odds of any large requests you'll struggle to handle without me coming in are fairly low at least, but... Leave everything to me, sir. I'll be sure to handle every request that comes in with care and kindness. I am well aware you always look forward to taking on smaller requests, too. So they'll be given the same high standard of service as any other. <laughs> you know me too well. Donk. Sig, what are you doing here? Uh, Sig! What on earth is Julia's bird doing here? Scree! Don't you just sit on His Excellency's arm as if it's your own personal property? It's my personal property! <sighs> please, Kano. There's no need to glare at him like that. Also, please stop calling me Your Excellency. Richard then noticed that there was a note attached to Sig's leg. What's this? It's addressed to me? Scree! Scree, scree! Richard took the memo from Sig's leg. This looks like... a letter from HQ? As in, military HQ? Why is the Royal Gods Carrier Falcon bringing a message to you? Who knows? It's Ryder's a real slave driver, though. Thank you for delivering this, Sig. Let him know that I accept his request. Scree! Um, sir, w was that? See for yourself. Best of luck with your little trip. We'd like to know what the Red Constellation is up to, too. So we'd appreciate you looking into it for us on the side. Honestly. I hope you don't think this information is going to come cheap, Brigadier General. Side story. I accept your request. Finished. Received the Covert Quartz and 10,000 Mira. Well, that was a fun one. <laughs> Turns out Richard is actually kind of getting used to his life. 
as a uh, civilian contractor. Let's hop on over to the base now. Welcome back, everyone. Uh, you okay, Ren? If you're feeling tired, why don't you rest here in the garden for a bit? All the others are here. You wouldn't be alone? I'm not tired at all. I've just got something on my mind. Huh. Well, I suppose it can't hurt. Let me give it a try. Um... Potter Motter! Donk. <laughs> I knew you'd come! Potter Motter, switch to standby mode. Right. That's that. Friend learn the Potter Motter S-Craft. And yeah. Huh? Red. What? <laughs> and why do you all look so surprised? This world can be directly influenced by people's thoughts. We've established that much already. So why wouldn't Potter Modder come for me? <laughs> if you believe it, it must be true. Let's go uh, take a sip of ocean brandy. And let's go talk to everybody. Uh, I'm Shara. Why don't you slow your drinking pace just a teensy little bit? When her mind begins to water, Shara has a habit of unconsciously starting to drink faster. I can't say I mind watching her like that. But trying to keep up with it for too long runs the risk of knocking me into a coma. <laughs> oh, Olivier. <laughs> well, <laughs> I'm sure everybody in this party wanted a chance to fight uh, Cassius Bright. Because <laughs> he's a Sundary, Tita. Yeah, yeah, I already know. Celeste told me. You'd be lying if I said I wasn't bitter about not being able to fight him with you. But I'll just pay him back another time, I guess. <laughs> he kicked my sorry ass more times than I could count. One day I'm gonna pay him back tenfold. Oh, there's Estelle and Joshua. <laughs> Good old-fashioned hard work, so you can't slack off. <laughs> uh, yep. Fighting Cassius Bright is a terrible idea. But you know what? We're a bunch of idiots, so terrible ideas just come naturally to us. Seems like uh, Chloe is stuck in research mode. So many stars, but not a single constellation, I know. Aw, Josette's starting to get homesick. Especially since we haven't run into the, any Sky Bandits yet, she's probably getting pretty lonely here. Hopefully we'll run into her friends soon enough. <laughs> He's a master in every sense of the word. Yep. Uh, am I gonna have to, like, bring everyone to the party to see, 
to see what Cassius has to say. <laughs> well, whatever. We can only do what we can do, right? <laughs> Alrighty then. Let's see what the rest of our party members have to say after we eject them. Okay. Let's move out. Got it. So, there's some challenging looking books. We've uh, seen this stuff before. I mean, if you really want to read them, feel free, but otherwise, you know, whatever. Doesn't matter. Richard's definitely lost in thought. <laughs> and looks like Richard's ready to move on with his life. At a Atta boy. There's Rius. Seems like she's marveling at how... how good of a family they are. team protagonist for the final stretch here. Uh, mostly because Josh was mandatory. I said I was bringing Rius along with me for this chapter, so I'm bringing Rius along with me for this chapter. And, uh, yeah, that's that. That is that. Uh, okay, so I guess heading back to the base was the trigger for Star Door 11, so that's all cleared properly now. Leaves three Star Doors. Uh, I believe three sun doors, or four sun doors, because I have to do two, three, four, and five. And then all the moon doors are done, of course. Okay, how are we looking for time? I think we're like an hour and a half or so. Um, nearly two hours. You know what? I'm gonna go break up the video here, take a small break, and I'll be back in like five, ten minutes or so. So hang on, sit tight, enjoy the show. If you're watching on YouTube, like, comment, and subscribe to the video. You know the drill. I'm just gonna make a save real quick though. Alright, I'll be back in a few minutes. <laughs> 